Hello, everybody. John Fulford here with the Music Licensing Lifestyle Podcast. September 12th, 2017. I am in Florida right now. I've been in Florida since Labor Day night. That is why this podcast is late, because we had a hurricane coming, and it was on its way, then it was almost here, and then it was here, and then it wouldn't leave, and then it left, and now it's really gone. It's gone, it's gone, so I could finally uh, sit down, record this with um, with peace of mind that the power would stay on and a big gust of wind wouldn't, uh, you know, knock out the power. And uh, yeah, so here I am. I've been in Florida for over a week now, just over a week. This is Tuesday night, September 12th. I'm recording this. And uh, it's been interesting. It's been interesting. I planned this Florida trip for a few weeks. And I, you know, being the Florida man that I am, I wouldn't reschedule even in the face of a major Category 5 hurricane. If you watch the news, that big line of cars going north on the turnpike on, on Florida trying to, in Florida, trying to evacuate the hurricane. I was in that. I flew into South Florida, spent a few days in South Florida, and then I was supposed to drive to Gainesville to watch the University of Florida Gators play against the Northern Colorado, whatever they are. I don't know their mascot. The game got canceled. First, it was moved to early Saturday, and then it got canceled. By the time it got canceled, I was already a few hours into what should have been a four-hour journey, ended up being a 12-hour journey on uh, you know, on I-95, the Turnpike, and I-75. Three major, I think the, the only three major thoroughfares going north-south through Florida. So again, a, f- a drive that should have taken about four, you know, four and a half hours, ended up taking twelve hours. Oh, did I have a place to stay on Thursday night? No, because my place wasn't ready until Friday afternoon. So I had to crash on an air mattress belonging to a friend of a friend, and that man is now my friend, and he does music. And believe me when I say, I will create and look for opportunities for this gentleman in the music licensing arena because he was very nice to me he stayed up till three in the morning and he had a family two kids and a wife who I didn't get I got I didn't get to meet the wife I got to meet the kids Friday morning when I when I woke up so yeah it's been uh it's been a a uh, an interesting week thankfully everything's pretty much back to normal Yesterday, Monday morning, oh man, it's all, yeah, it was only yesterday when the hurricane came through. Taco Bell was opened. Uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken was opened. Two Taco Bells were opened and a Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Subway. The lines were so long that the police were actually there for crowd control. And one of the Taco Bells had to lock their doors. You couldn't get in because it was at capacity. <clears throat> capacity. Because people didn't have, you know, food. Or actually, what probably happened was the food they had, the hurricane food, was probably too disgusting. You know, I was eating two-day leftover turkey meat because the hurricane was supposed to, like, they're like, okay, Sunday to Monday is when the hurricane is going to hit. So two full days. So I cooked Saturday. I cooked a little bit on Sunday. And then you just sit and wait for this massive hurricane to inch its way up the state. And with these hurricanes... If, if they change direction just one degree, that could be the difference between, you know, your house's roof getting ripped off to you just losing power or you just get some rain. It's one degree, okay? Because out the eye, the eye wall is the strongest winds. So when they say category five, they're measuring that wind at the eye wall. If you go, you know, 80, 90 miles, you know, East or west or north or south of that eye wall, the winds, they're still very bad. You're not going to go outside. You're not going to drive around. You're going to seek shelter, but they're not strong enough to rip a house apart. Okay? So when these hurricanes shift just one or two degrees in either like direction, say it shifts east a little bit, shifts west a little bit, and you miss that eye wall, 
then you're missing a lot of damage. Conversely, unfortunately, that means someone who thought that was going to get, someone who thought um, there's only going to be minor damage, that means they get the eye wall and they get more damage. That's why everybody has to prepare. At first, it was going to rip through West Palm Beach and everybody was worried. Instead, it ripped through Naples. So everyone in West Palm Beach, you know, while there's, you know, some people lost power, these people boarded up their homes. Oh, and that's how you say homes in South Florida and West Palm Beach. All the hustlers, they they really dragged that, the O oh sound. So they boarded up their homes and everything. And thankfully, you know, it tilted and it, and it kind of, it still hit, but the eye wall went over the West Coast of Florida. Unfortunately, they had to take the hit. So Naples and Fort Myers and, and those types of cities and Key West, you know, it, it's it was down south, so it was always going to get hit, and it it got uh, it got the worst of it. I think they're uh, they, they still won't pe- let people in to Key West. And for all you knuckleheads, and just let everyone know, I voted for Bernie Sanders. I wrote him in, okay, because he's the only true person on the ticket. You knuckleheads saying that Donald Trump should have opened up Mar a Lago, Lago, Mar a Lago. Do you know where that's located? Do you know where that's located? It's located on a on a on the edge of an island with the ocean. It's literally the island is so thin where it takes place where like the front yard is by the ocean, the backyard is by the intercoastal waterway. So I know like Michael Moore and other people were like saying, "Why don't you open that up as a shelter?" Um because it could have been catastrophic. Okay, it 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 no. Like they won't after the hurricane, they won't let people back into Palm Beach because of the devastation. Okay, because it's so unsafe. Power lines dangling, flooded things. You know what I mean? So just so you know, if you hear anyone saying, well, you should have opened up Mar-a-Lago, that person didn't do their, you know, they, they just don't have common sense on the situation. I have just saw a lot of that over the hurricane, and that gives the Trump people ammo for a, for a counter argument. You know what I mean? Like, why are you setting yourself up to lose an argument? You know what I mean? Why are you setting up yourself for the, the people that you don't want to be popular in office put one over on you? You know what I mean? I just, it's, it's, it's beyond me, you know? And usually I stay out of politics. I don't really look at that stuff, but you know, you're talking about, you know, a, a, a disaster in my home city. With the, there's devastation, there's looting, there's floods, there's electrocutions, people's roofs are getting ripped off, and, you know, oh, why don't you open up Mar-a-Lago as a shelter? I don't see you doing that. Well, because the police made everybody evacuate that area. Okay, that that's why. Common sense should tell you that. It's on an island. But anyway, it's just something weird I saw on, uh, on, on, on Twitter. So anyway... I'm here. I can't do any demo listening this episode because I don't have all of my gear. Actually, all I would need was a quarter inch. I'm missing a cable. I should have got it at Guitar Center. There's a guitar center in the small town where I'm at, uh, but I didn't think of it. I was too busy buying a microphone and stuff. I'm going to be slick and send all this gear that I bought. I'm going to mail it back to myself so I don't have to carry it on the plane. Uh, the plane ride into Florida, I took the red eye, you know, late at night with a stopover in Detroit of all places. So I flew like a giant triangle, you know, LA, Detroit, Detroit, uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. And then I drove in a rent a car up to, um, up to Gainesville where I am right now. I should be going to the university of Florida game this Saturday. Luckily, uh, I got word this morning that they did not move it. They didn't move the game, so that's good. Yeah, so now I'm here chilling, working on some music, plotting, planning, pontificating to myself. Get I got my magazine, Ad Brat. I'm, I'm getting some articles ready for that and uh, getting ready for this RAC tour. Next month, I'm going to hit up at least four dates on, right, four, four dates on that tour to be the sync person in, you know, at, in the city at the venue so if you're going to any of those RAC dates, let me know which date you're going to, and I'll let you know if I'll be there. We could hang out in person. Yeah, so uh, what are we going to talk about today? I didn't really 
did I? Oh, 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 I know what I want to talk about. People on the internet have been writing me. They've been emailing me, musiclicensingpodcast at gmail.com, by the way. Musiclicensingpodcast at gmail.com. And they say, hey, where do you get your briefs? Okay, where do you get your briefs? Where, like, how do you know what types of music people are looking for? Because briefs, like, when, when, when most people see a brief, it's behind a paywall, right? You know, pay $5 to submit to this brief, pay 20 credits to submit to this brief, uh, you know, TV show looking for punk rock instrumentals, click here to submit. How do I, John C. Fulford III, get my briefs? Okay, that's what people want to know. How do I get my briefs? Well, if you land a brief, okay, if, if someone sends you a brief and you submit music and the music gets used for what the brief is asking for, like the project, they're going to send you more briefs. Okay, so some people don't send everybody every brief. Okay, so for instance, I'm known for a lot of electronic-based music. Okay, for better or for worse, it is what it is. So if I talk to my friend at some show and they use a lot of rock-based stuff and I go, hey, maybe you need, do you need anything right now? He's going to say, or she's going to say, it's pretty much a she because there's more female music supervisors than men. He or she will say, oh, I don't need anything right now. I'm good. But then they'll go in the office and you know Razor and Ty will call and then they'll say, oh, wait. Yeah, we need this and this and this. So not everybody gets every brief. And that's part of what I'm trying to do is get all the briefs I can, even if it's not an electronic-based brief because I have more and more rock-based stuff now, more and more ethnic-based stuff. I'm building the largest one-stop foreign language catalog right now. Okay, so if someone needs a, uh, you know, I get a lot of briefs for Chinese music, but I don't get a lot of briefs for like Russian music and I know they're out there because I hear I hear them in movies and on TV and stuff so not everybody gets every brief but the more briefs that you submit to even if you don't land the placement if you submit some great material and everyone's like wow this is really good stuff you'll get more briefs okay and you'll get more focused briefs what I mean is if if a show's just starting they might send this brief and we're like look we need rock music we need rap music we need covers we need this and that they don't know what they need yet. They're trying to get a palette. They're trying to build a palette. But the more focused briefs are like episode 103. We need six urban tracks in this episode. Two are party club style. Three are Spanish. Uh, you know, Spanish. Two of the Spanish tracks is party. One of them is uh, like a like a, for a for a scene when uh, people are driving in the car to the to dinner so it could be anything like upbeat friendly but not necessarily danceable you know things like that they're they're more focused to borrow the the vowel sound of my west palm beach natives F focused they're more focused briefs okay so how do i get these briefs well you got to meet the directors you got to meet the producers you got to meet the music supervisors Okay, you got to introduce yourself. You either got to call. You got to meet them in person. You got to do something. And y'all in small towns, I'm telling you, y'all in small towns have an advantage that people in, L in L.A., New York, and Chicago do not have. Okay, if you're in Columbus, Ohio, if you're in Phoenix, Arizona, if you're in these cities, or if you're in a small town... If, if you're in Live Oak, Florida, whatever, you have an advantage. And I'm telling you this, and I'll, I'll tell you all 100 times, and maybe on the 101st time, someone will do what I say, and they're, they're going to get a lot, of, um, a lot of payoff from it. They're going to get a lot of ROI. Okay, say, say you live in a city. I'm just going to name a random city. Um, Kansas City. Or even something smaller. I, I don't know. Uh, we'll just say Kansas City because I can't think of any any smaller cities because I don't know them offhand. Say you what did I say? Did I say Columbus, Ohio? No, I said Kansas City. Okay, Kansas City. 
So say you live in Kansas City. Oh, no, there's no music supervisors in Kansas City. What are you going to do? Easy. You find an event space, all right, and you make the Kansas City Music Conference a one-day event, all right? You, and you raise money, whether it's from your own pocket, whether it's from driving Uber on your off days, whether it's getting money from your friends, whether it's getting money from the community or, or partnering with the local community junior or state college or the university. You make something. Kansas City Music Business Day. And I guarantee you, you'll find people within the 50-mile radius, the 50-mile radius, that will want to drive out and pay, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks for this one-day event. All right? Now, when you call these music supervisors, and don't ask me how to get their info. If, you know, ladies and gentlemen, they have Twitter. They have, you could Google their name and get more info. Back in my day, I had a, you don't want to know what I had to do to get a hold of a music supervisor in 2003 from, from, from Gainesville, Florida, when I was living in Gainesville, Florida, Oxford Manor, 2777 Southwest Archer Road. Look it up. Apartment SS221, I believe. Look it up on Google Maps. That's where I was. That's where I was cold calling 100 cold calls a week, okay? I would cold call, and I would watch Married with Children while I was cold calling and drink a soda that I would buy from the pool area vending machine, but I never went in the pool. Go figure. Are you surprised? I'm not. So set this up. Set up an event and call these music supervisors. Do something for me. Call one music supervisor and introduce yourself and say, hey, can I send you some music? And just see how interested they are. All likelihood, they're not going to be that interested. They get dozens of calls a week, all right, from people that are just starting in the business all the way up, up to, um, oh, I just trashed an email by mistake. Oh, geez. Hold on. Let me untrash this. Um, hold on. Move to inbox. Okay. Hit that button. I jumped the gun. Trashed an email by mistake. Then call the supervisor and say, hi, my name's so-and-so. I am the curator of the Kansas City Music Fest, you know, Music Business Fest. It's a one-day business symposium in Kansas City, Kansas, or Kansas City, Missouri, um, over here at the uh, community college. And we would like to offer you an all-expenses-paid uh, ticket and hotel room to speak at our panel. We have a panel called, you know, When Hollywood Comes to Middle America, you know, blah, 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 blah. And see the response you get. It's going to be a lot better than when you call wanting to send your music. Okay? So this Hollywood or this Kansas City Music Fest, it can only be one panel. It doesn't have to be a full day of stuff. You don't have to have bands playing. It's the first time you're doing it. Start off slow. Do one panel. Do one panel. Okay, put them in a hotel for the night or maybe two nights. Let them dictate. If they have a family, they're going to need to get back super quick. If they're just down to eat barbecue and have fun, you might get them a hotel for two nights. Let them dictate to you. And guess what? When they fly into your small town, you look like you got the finger on the pulse of what's happening because you're setting this thing up. You know, a car picks them up at the airport, a nice Lincoln Continental, and takes them around, and then they have dinner with you, and you look like you know what's going on. And then you say, hey, you know, I noticed you're working on these projects. You know, you look up on the internet, you can see what these people are working on. I read your article in the Entertainment Weekly about the music for this show that you're working on. Do you need any any music for next season? What What's your plan for next season? Oh, my gosh. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they're telling you exactly what they need. Oh, we're going to need this. We're going to need that. X, Y, Z. Okay. Okay. And they'll probably even say, you know, our budgets are between this and this. Now, isn't that good information? And are you kind of paying for that info? Kind of, but you're also doing something for the community. Also, if you set it up correctly, you are, um, you're either going to break even or make a little bit of money. If that college 
in town will let you use their space for free in exchange for, you know, 30 free tickets for their students. You just fill the room up with 30 tickets. That Because, you know, you don't want an empty room, so you get 30 tickets. And you get a free room, you know? And if you could get 20, 30, 40 more people, you know, each to pay like 20 bucks, that's 800 bucks. You know, that's 800 bucks. So how much are tickets from L.A. to your town and back? Coach, say, hey, look, I got to fly a coach. I'm sorry. Maybe get a couple sponsors. Will that hotel in town, will they give you a break on the rooms? Okay, will the, will the restaurant give you a break on the dinner in exchange for promotion? Okay, you, you use some outside-of-the-box thinking on this. You know what I mean? Use some outside of the box thinking. Small small towns. That's what I would be doing. You know, if if I was in the small town. Now I've tried. You know, I do panels in Hollywood. It's cool, and I will continue to do them. Maybe I'll just do them live streaming. Maybe I'll continue to do them in person. I haven't decided yet. I'm still kind of debating. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Every time I think I I, I want to just do streaming on the internet. I change my mind and want to do something in person, but then in, every time I try to do something in person, I kind of change my mind and want to do something live streaming on the internet. But if you're in a small town, you want the, the supervisors to come to you. There was something going on in Oklahoma City. I, for, I don't know the name of it. I forgot what it was, but a lot of people went and, and I saw like on social media, a lot of people had a really great time. I don't know who set it up or whether it was with the school or a professional organization or something like that, but a lot of people had a really great time, and I'm sure that someone landed a sink off of it, okay? Now there's people that I've seen. You know, I had this idea. I said, I was telling some music supervisor friends of mine, I said, I want to have a uh, an event like in Costa Rica in a big jungle mansion. Someone's already doing it. They've been doing it. I'm late. I'm late to the party on that one. So someone figured out how to do an event in Costa Rica. So they fly a bunch of people to Costa Rica, and have a great time in the jungle and stuff. Okay, for I don't know how long it is. I'm gonna ask because I know some people that are going. I'm not going. I would go if I'm there. See, I don't even know because I go to some things and I kind of like I just go. I pay and I go to some things because I don't want to have to listen to music. Like I don't want to, I don't want to be like, you know, told like, okay, two p.m. to five p.m. You have to listen to music. I might not want to listen. I might want to listen to music from five p.m. to ten p.m., which is five hours instead of three. But from two to five, I might not want to listen to music. So I usually just pay to go and just hang out. So I'm not for like, like people aren't. I don't want to say forced, but people are depending on me from this time to this time to like listen to music. I listen to music on my podcast, just not today because I don't have the cable. Because uh, if I did, you wouldn't be able to actually hear what I'm uh I'm listening to. And I and I hope I hope that's given you good insights, you know, into the syncability of a lot of stuff when I do listen to stuff on the computer, you know. And, you know, I, I hope you hear it. How like, you know, half of the stuff is n- totally not captivating. Half of that half is almost captivating, but not. And then the other half of the half, like twenty five percent is is captivating enough to give a second listen, but only you know one to five percent is is at that benchmark that I could do something with. You know what I mean? So I, I hope y'all are listening and and seeing that as well. Okay, so I could ramble for a few more minutes here. I, I usually do what like an hour, half hour of demo listening, half hour of rambling. I could keep I could keep rambling. So yeah. Small town, that's what you want to do. And I've heard, and I've told people this, and people say, well, uh, no. You know, well, figure it out. Well, I don't know. Figure it out. Okay? I don't have any money. Good. You don't have any money? Great. Great. Where are you going to have dinner with these with, with, with your guests? Go there. Look for a sponsorship. Where are you going to host the event? There's got to be a college or a school somewhere. What about a high school? What about something in the afternoon, one of those mandatory high school things? You know, when I went to University of Florida for music, like one of the music electives I took for fun, there were some events that we had to attend for a grade. It was like missing, like, 
part of your grade. I don't know how much. I don't want to guess how much, but like you pretty much had to go to these things. Okay, and these, this stuff, I, I forgot what they even were, so they couldn't have been all that, all that good. You know what I mean? So if if the music supervisor for this big Hollywood film is coming to a college to speak, you know you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of people coming out. Okay, you don't have any money. That's fine. Okay, who's gonna pick him up from the airport? Okay, you pick him up. Make sure all their flights come in with the same time frame and pick him up. Figure out how to do it. If your town is small enough, you might even be able to get the mayor involved and get money from the town. There was a guy throwing a, a uh, what is it, an expo, I guess, for lack of a better word, in Hong Kong. And it was cool. I went once. You know, Thankfully, he gave me a, a press pass as long as I paid my own way. So that was that was good. Thank you very much. And, um, oh, there's another email. Hold on. Let me, let me trash this. Oh, good. I didn't, I didn't accidentally trash, trash a, a, the wrong email like I did a few minutes ago. But Hong Kong wouldn't give this gentleman enough subsidies, so he took his conference to Singapore, and the thing got a lot bigger, like, from one year to the next because the government of Singapore, you know, they, they were in on the deal. They got to sponsor it. They got to sponsor this event. And I don't know exactly what Singapore contributed. You know, I, I I don't know, but I'm sure it was something something that you could assign a dollar value. You know, maybe they didn't charge this guy taxes. Everything he did for the event, he got a tax rebate. So say you're throwing an event, like I'm just using this guy as an example. Maybe his event cost 200 grand to uh, throw. And he said, let's say he paid $20,000 in taxes. He could submit those receipts. Maybe he gets a rebate. He maybe he gets a check back from the government. I don't know. But it's worth going to your, you know, your local government, especially if you live in a super small town. You can like make an appointment with the mayor or the city council or something cool like that, and say, "Hey, we're bringing these Hollywood people to our town for um, this event. It's going to support musicians, and we want to get these local musicians." their music into these shows and films and ads. Is there a way we could work together? I don't have a big budget. I'm trying to make this happen. And then, you know, if, if the hotel gets a call from the mayor and says, hey, can you give up four rooms at a 50% discount for two nights and next month or in two months? Okay, unless there's a big event in town or something crazy, you know, New Orleans during Mardi Gras or something like that, you're probably going to get some good concessions. And that's not count. That's not counting finding a money sponsor, you know, Bob's guitars, things like that. Guitar, go into Guitar Center and say, "This is what I'm trying to do. Can you donate the PA? Let us borrow a PA. Can you give us 500 bucks? What about vendors? You know, vendors that musicians use. What types of vendors? There's cable companies. There's you know, not cable TV, ca- mic cables. I'm staring at my mic cable. There's microphone companies. There's these websites, Band Zoogle. I don't even know what that, I just see the name. I don't know what that website does, but they cater towards, um, they cater towards musicians, right? Hey, you know, my name's whatever. I'm, I'm here in this small town. I'm throwing a panel. Can you sponsor it, you know, for $500? It's the Platinum Plus sponsor. You get, you know, you get your name on the thing, blah, blah, blah. And guess what? Even if the com- the the one day I don't want to say conference because it's, it's, say the panel doesn't work out, like say you can't do it, at least you tried and you made some great contacts. And I promise, if you call these film directors or music supervisors or or even A and R people at labels and say I want to fly you out for a conference, just listen, listen to their voice. You will hear that they're interested, even if they can't do it. They'll say, oh, really? Oh, tell me more. But if you call them with your music, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, send it to the uh, demos at whatever, whatever dot com. Click. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense to y'all? So, I, you know, everyone should be trying this. And I've told people, people say, how could I get on? Can you put me on? I said, well, th- where do you live? I live here. Throw a conference. Oh, and if your mind is in music but not in like setting stuff up, have your friend do it. 
Okay, have someone at your day job do it. You you don't have to do all the work yourself. If if you're like like on the shy side, if you're on the shy side, have someone do it. But it's gonna be like it's kind of like working out, but for your brain. You know what I mean? It's kind of like working out for your brain. I know people like I know people that would rather work out for four hours than make two cold calls. But I would rather make 20 cold calls than work out, but I know I have to work out anyway, obviously, to be healthy and stuff like that. Woo, woo, woo. But you see what I'm saying? I don't like Because when I make cold calls and I make sales calls, it's like, oh, okay, here's what I got to do. You know, it's kind of fun. It's kind of not. I don't I don't even know like how to explain it. But you get a lot out of it. You know what I mean? You get a lot out of it. So I okay, I hope that helps. I hope that helps. That's enough rambling for me right now. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Link in the description, link in the show notes. Email me your demos. Music licensing podcast at gmail.com, music licensing podcast at gmail.com. Set up set up a, a panel, set up an event in your town. Email me. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know what you're doing. Let me know who's going to speak at it. You know, I'll, I'll be happy to help you any way I can. Just you got to make the first step. Don't make your first step emailing me about it, okay? Email me about it once you lock down a venue and once you have like one confirmed speaker. You know what I'm saying? Because me, I'm the safe person because you hear me ramble. You email me, hey, man. No. Get out your comfort zone. Email that that film director whose email you found on the internet. Email that music executive, A&R person, music supervisor. Get that venue and then hit me up when you need more panelists. Okay, when you need more panelists to speak, all right? So music licensing podcast at gmail.com. Email me, email me, email me. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're just over 3,000 subscribers. I couldn't be happier about that. We're climbing, we're climbing, we're climbing. And yes, thank you very much again for listening and have yourself a great week.